Welcome to the On Our Way Home podcast. The goal of On Our Way Home is to encourage you to keep taking steps with Jesus, with a good local church, and with a few close friends so that we will stay on Jesus' path, a path of truth which leads to life with the Father. Well, welcome to the On Our Way Home podcast. Uh, We are continuing to work through uh, the Sermon on the Mount, and hopefully you're not bored with that yet because it's not boring. It's not boring at all. It's a little bit too much in your face, Yeah. in your life. It's like sitting in one of those um, massage chairs, you know, it like goes from your back all the way to your feet. It's yeah. Like, it's kind of, uh, shaking you up. It's shaking your whole body up. It's a shake up. Yeah. And it's good because sometimes we can sort of just go with the flow. Right. And then when we're going with the flow, maybe we're too comfortable. Maybe we're just not aware. Yeah. And this is like pulling us back to what we need to be focused on. Yeah. If you just kind of go with that flow, you're going the natural way. Natural is not. It's great when it's. Uh, <laughs> There's that phrase. It feels so natural. Yeah. That's like we look at that positive. Uh huh. The problem is we need to acknowledge our nature. It's not good. <laughs> yeah, we have a sinful nature. Right. So the going the natural way is not necessarily, the, it's not the right way. <clears throat> yeah, my first response perhaps may not be the right one. Right. True. Might, might be the, the Jesus response is the right one. So Jesus says, go this way. Right. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. And we are in Matthew chapter 7, and we only have uh, one, two, three verses to talk about today. Right. It's just a quick run through right, right there. Right. So we'll be done in five minutes. Yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> no, this passage three. It's we, packed. We broke it down just as three verses for that sermon. and uh, Yeah. And it's packed full of. Yeah. Stuff. I'll read this. This is from the Holman Christian Standard Version. Mm-hmm. We don't want to get into a version fight. No. We don't fight over versions. There's lots of... Good versions. Good versions. Lots of good versions. A couple bad ones, but... Uh, <laughs> there's always a couple but bad there's apples. There's a lot of insight in reading the different versions. So. Right. And you can take a look around. And so this is from the... Or the Christian Standard Bible. And uh, I've liked, I like this one, but there are also... Give also, it to us. Yeah. Here we go. Therefore, whatever you want others to do for you, do also the same for them. This is the law and the prophets. Enter through the narrow gate. For the gate is wide and the road is broad that leads to destruction, and there are many who go through it. How narrow is the gate and difficult the road that leads to life, and few find it. Hmm. That's it. There it is. But in that passage, we do have the golden rule. Do unto others. As you would have them do unto you. Right. And I'm thinking probably everybody listening to the podcast knows this. Right. I think even people who are not from Christian backgrounds probably know this. You know, like I think Gandhi knew this. Right. And uh, all kinds of people, uh, it's, everybody. It's and a this, universal rule. Yeah, it's kind of a good way to live. Mm-hmm. It, yeah, it's not bad. Um, it's, it's not certainly. bad. No. Um, that, and it's what's awesome is. That it's so globally known, yet it's a biblical truth. Right. So it's like a good job Bible. Right. But then there's, I think, this great misunderstanding or maybe maybe not even the misunderstanding, misapplication of this. Yeah. Yeah. So having heard it a lot, Mm -hmm. you know, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows that. So what's the danger of knowing something? I mean, if it's like, what's the danger of knowing everybody knowing it? Right. Um, yeah, thinking, I guess thinking that you really know it, but the problem is I think not doing it Yeah. or, or reversing, you know, I think the problem is actually the reversal. Um, I want others to do unto me. Yeah. Right. So I'm going to do unto them before or, uh, yeah. you know, you're, you're do still, unto others before they do unto you. You're, yes. <laughs> you're reversing the focus of the golden rule. Yeah. Uh, to make it about you. Yeah. That's really not what Jesus is pointing to. Right. We can be inoculated to truth. So, I mm. mean, if you, just because uh, I think Francis Chan uh, was telling his daughter one time, hey, you know, clean your room. And so that was the word from the dad. Right. And so, you know, she was able to quote it. I think he was even poking fun in it, you know, like uh, she'd had a Bible study on her dad's or a word study of, you know, (laughs) they did studies talking about what it meant to clean your room, you know, the different ways that you could clean your room. And in the end of the day, you know, he said, "Um, have you cleaned your room? Uh, No. 
And it's like, oh, <laughs> perhaps she would want to do. It's not that she hadn't heard it. Uh, or, or studied it. Studied, I mean, I don't. She, she never studied it. That, that was just a joke. Right. But, yeah. <laughs> but but the point is, we can think we know. Do unto others as you have done. You know. Yeah. Uh, the way you would want them to do to you, but then we probably haven't done it. Mm-hmm. And so Jesus is calling us to do it. Right. Um, yeah. And that's, and it's always harder to, it's always easier to quote than to do. Mm-hmm. Um, it's super easy just to quote it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you could go on the street corner, busy street corner in Grand Rapids or something. Hey, do you know what the golden rule is? Yeah. And my, maybe six out of 10, seven, maybe nine out of 10. I don't know. Yeah. A lot of people would know that. Yeah. They might make up some other rule <laughs> and call it the golden rule. But a lot of people, he I think, with the, would. Who has, whoever has the gold right. makes the rules. Yeah, you know, the, so that's a bad joke. Right. Or um, who carries the biggest <laughs> stick, or I think that's a different <laughs> rule. But, yes. Uh, put down your sticks. Yeah. People don't want to be loved with a stick. Wow. Whap, whap. That's not a good way to do it. But everybody does. I mean, I don't know who wouldn't want to be treated well by others, right? Right, yes. But that, again, is taking it from the wrong side, where right. it so, often is taken. Yeah. I want other people to treat me nice. Right. Oh, are you treating them? Are you going out intentionally loving others first? Right. And and not just waiting in expectations for others first to come to you. Right. Where's that focus? If you want to uh, have friends, mm-hmm. you need to be a friend. Right. But then the motivation, I think, is the nasty part of that because the motiva- our motivations are what trip us up. Yeah. So, you know, well, I'm being friendly because I want lots of friends. Yeah. It's like, well, no, why don't you be friendly? Why don't? Why am I not friendly? Because that's good for that other person. Right. That's the be- yeah. Even uh, with raising kids, you know, a lot of times, and my parents with me, I'm, I'm sure, <laughs> as well as the same, um, we... You know, when working with our kids, we don't want them to just do something. We want them to do it for the right reason. Yeah. Right? Is. Yeah. <laughs> Behavior modification, you know, just changing someone's externals, mm-hmm. um, you can do that in a lot of different ways. Yeah. Um, give them rewards, and that's, giving punishments, but then it's still, what, you're going to say something? Uh, that That's just what this whole Sermon on the Mount has been. Yeah. He's been talking about. Um, there are things that Christians should be doing, saying, living like, mm-hmm. but ultimately it comes all back to the same location. What about your, where's your heart in this right. obedience, in this doing, in this living? And Jeremiah is very clear. Jeremiah 17, the heart is deceitful above all things and beyond healing. Yeah. Who can understand it? <clears throat> Jeremiah says, "Well, God says, I the Lord under you know, I the Lord probe the heart, yeah, and I give people rewards according to what I find in their heart." And mm-hmm. it's like, oh man, God, please don't probe my heart, yeah, because you're going to find a lot of ugh in yeah. there, <laughs> yeah. And but that's good because then if God points it out, and then this is the gospel, you see your sin and you see Christ as a great Savior. Yeah, it's repenting time. Yeah, and then that's the beginning of life. So Jesus is all about this this internal change of being in the kingdom, mm-hmm. being poor in spirit. Right, that's what's coming back to even in this. Every every time we talk about the <laughs> the beatitudes, every time we talk about the Lord's prayer, every time we talk about the golden rule. Yep, it starts with a heart of brokenness. Yep, you know I don't have what it takes to do this to treat someone else well. Yeah. I don't have it. No. Because I'm always thinking about me. Right. And if we're honest, I mean, honesty is always the best policy, someone has said. Mm -hmm. So um, there's an over the hedge. (laughs) We talk a lot about DreamWorks and uh, other Disney (laughs) movies during this podcast. Maybe we should call this the, uh, we like to talk about uh, funny characters podcast. Anyway, we won't do that. It's on our way home. But uh, so RJ in Over the Hedge. Right. Little he, squirrel. He's all, he uh, is very selfish. Oh, no, that's Hammy. Hammy's the squirrel. Mm. RJ is the raccoon. Oh, yeah, raccoon. Oh, man, he's a nasty little. He's so <laughs> selfish, and he's doing everything in the thing for himself. Yep. And so he uh, stole all this food, used everybody in the little over-the-hedge neighborhood to, to steal the food to give to the bear because to he robbed his hide. Yeah, RJ, you know, so he was in trouble. And so... 
uh, he was watching a Dr. Phil show. It wasn't Dr. Phil, but he was watching it on the TV uh-huh. in the woods. And it's like, own it. You are a scumbag. And so he was watching all these shows that were pointing out how selfish he was. And that's a little bit too much of a bunny trail we'll get back on now. Yeah. But the selfishness is really deeply rooted in us. And I'm just sometimes amazed that it's like, oh, man, here it is again. Right. Oh, Again, it's back to that. That's our natural way. Yeah. And when we see ourselves for who we really are, yeah. um, either there's going to be, you know, uh, a, like, I don't care. That's who I am. Yeah. Or uh, take it or leave it, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll leave it because we don't like that. <laughs> right. <laughs> we don't like that one. Hopefully, uh, there's not that. Hopefully, there's not, yeah. not just guilt. Oh, I'm such a bad person. Right. Hopefully, there's a, oh, yeah, that's not okay. Yeah. But I'm going to. Turn from that and and change yeah. my direction. Yeah, and I mean it's just amazing that God declares righteous the ungodly. Right, it's all a work uh, of Him. Yeah, so it's a gift. It's God's salvation is a gift from God. We don't earn it. We can't merit it. We, and when we receive it, that that changes. You know that changes us so that yep. we can do the right thing, yep. loving someone else without. A self focus to it, right? Why? Why would you actually do the golden rule the way it's supposed to be done? Um, well, in your natural way, you wouldn't, right? So yeah. it's got to be a work of God in you to to go out and pursue people. But then, when you when you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, personal, um, then you realize what He's done for you. That's why you would do this out of gratitude, right? In response to what <clears throat> Jesus has already done for you, yeah. In a, a repentant turn and change from that and following his way. Yeah. His way looks like loving the unlovely. Yeah. Giving grace to those who don't deserve it. Yeah. And uh, Jesus did the right thing without a focus on himself. Right. So the reason he did all of his stuff was for the because the father wanted him to. Right. And because people were hurting. Yeah. You know, so uh, often when Jesus was out with the crowds, he was like Oh man, these people have been with me for three days. They don't have any food. We've got to do something to help these people. Mm-hmm. You know these. Or he looked out and he saw the people, and it's like he had compassion right. on them. It says that often. It's like when I look out at people, perhaps my first response may not be compassion. Yeah, it might be anger. Could be frustration. Could be ugh. All right. And Jesus was like, "Oh, these people are like sheep without a shepherd." Mm. Yep. So his focus was really on them to help them. Yeah, it was. And so how can we, what are some ways that we can keep loving one another in the center of our actions? Hmm. What's a good way to, what are some good ways that we can do that? Because we have to confess, it's not our natural bent. It's not natural right. to put others in the center or put God in the center, then others. Right. And then lastly, kind of, you know, allow God to take care of us. Right. So how can we do that better? Yeah. Or, yeah. It, it's, uh, again, that's, it's so contrary to, to our self-focus Yeah. Um, t- to do that. I think we, we really need help with that, obviously, from God, from the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Time in His Word, time in prayer, and time with other Christians. Yeah. You know, those kind of things. Instead of taking a selfie... Maybe uh-huh. I need to point it at someone else. Yeah. Hey, let me take a picture of you instead of, hey, take a picture of me. And right. I mean, it's just like, oh. That's true. Yes. Less selfies. <clears throat> right. Although I do take them. I mean, they're nice to capture memories. Mm-hmm. But it's, um, you yeah. know, it's that also, that looking for the need in others. Yeah. But, I, you know, I'm so needy. Yeah. We, we all have maybe wants. Um, right. Some of us have some big needs. Right. Um. But do you trust the Lord to take care of your needs? If so, then you can just be always looking outward. Yeah. You know, just like you said with the selfie. Yeah. Looking to meet the needs of others. And yeah. that's actually a man, it's an awesome, encouraging, exciting way to go about life. Yeah. Um, to see how God can use you to bless others. Yeah. Right? And that really all of a sudden, it's not about you anymore when you're really pursuing life that way. Yeah. I was reading in the Psalms this past week, and um, and in the Psalms, David said, I have never seen the righteous begging bread hmm. or their children hurting. 
they lend freely, it said. Yeah. So they were there was this generosity principle in people who knew God. Mm-hmm. And it was like, God, when you're generous like that, you, you know, you're giving your focus as others. Uh, you don't, you find yourself being taken care of. You find your needs being met when you serve other people. Mm. Not, you know, not like, oh, look at you, you're great for serving, but it's more like, you know, I'm, you're in line with what God would want. Yep. God does that. God takes care of people. Right. Um, for their own good, you know, and for his glory. Yep. And so when we're focusing more on that, so I think, I mean, it's it's kind of redundant, but I mean, a good old dose of the Bible, um, <laughs> just, re- just reading th- all the way through the scriptures, slowly, steadily, finding time to do that. Yep. You know, it's going to be really, I was like, wow, the, the righteous kids never have to beg bread? Nope. God provides the our needs. Yeah. It's like, wow. Okay. I, the That just came to my, popped into my mind when you're saying that about, um, took a number of missions trips down to Mexico and w- was working with a, like a women's shelter orphanage type place. Yeah. And I remember going there the first time and really seeing like genuine joy. I mean, real yeah, joy, and yet they were living in what we would consider absolute poverty. Right, you know, kind mm-hmm. of thing. Mm-hmm. Yet they had this fullness about. So mm-hmm. even in that, it's God. God will certainly watch over His children, give us all that we need, maybe right. not all we want. Yeah, and, and yet those levels of abundance, um, mm-hmm. which we aren't. Uh, Maybe co- as cognizant of mm-hmm. when you see that, you go, "Wow!" It really struck me as yeah. a as a pastor who's been a Christian a very long time. Yeah, I see this fullness, mm-hmm. and that fullness came directly from the person of Jesus. Yeah, that was really convicting to me, and it also encouraging. Like, wow, right? I think that someone has said once um, when you realize that Jesus. Uh, sometimes you realize Jesus is all you need when Jesus is all you have. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, you can have, we can have a lot of stuff, but having a lot of stuff um, doesn't really bring you peace. Right. Like what you saw in Mexico, bring you joy, yep. bring you to praise, you know, um, I used to work with a guy who would say, I'm just thankful that God got me up this morning. Yep. Yeah. It's like, what? Yeah, he didn't even take getting up in the morning for granted. Mm. Yeah. It's like, man, God, thank you for blessing me with another day. It's right. like, wow. Yeah. That was, uh, that was like, and he said that, I don't, um, his name was Gregory, really great guy, mm. um, but uh, just really was thankful for a brand new day. Yep. And I, I think, uh, you know, we were, I was trying to figure out how verse 12 kind of stands alone in a lot of ways, this yeah. golden rule. Yeah. But we have verse 13 and 14, which we kind of grouped in here yeah. in, in this sermon. But God, I think, was really showing us uh, if we're going to live like this, truly live the golden rule with the yeah. right, a right heart and the right way, Yes, focused on others, not ourselves, um, there's only one way in which that happens, you know, which we've already kind of mentioned a little bit, but it's... Um, it, it can only be if we're in Christ. Yeah. And that, you know, this narrow way and wide way that kind of follows yeah. is so tied to this first part. Right. Know? Yeah, it is. So we need to stay on Jesus's way, which is <clears throat> a narrow at the beginning. Right. It's, it's pretty tight. Yeah. It's, um, what does it say? Enter through the narrow gate. Yes. That gate is narrow. Right. How how big is it? It's not big. Yeah, and it's not just talking metaphorically. Um it they were it, the Bible there's referencing a, a physical thing in the walled cities which they had. Right. Mm-hmm. And the narrow gate was a specific doorway or yeah. entrance. Right. And it was big enough for one. One person. Right. Not two, not one and a half. Right. <laughs> right. Don't, not one yeah. with a backpack. <laughs> If you could turn sideways, could you get two guys? No, it's a one. One. It's a one. And so, and that's Jesus, right? So Jesus is the way. Yep. So you have to enter through Christ or you don't enter. Yep. And that that will immediately tick a lot of people off. Yep. Um, and there's not many ways to God. There's not the two-man gate or the ten-man gate or... 
I read a book about once about many ways to God. Yeah. You know, and it's like, I think his name was Hicks or something. I'll probably put it up in the little background here. Yeah. But it's, that's that's a lie. Right. You know, and how, you know, when I think you can see the demonic activity in our world mm-hmm. through the numbers of ways that people, you know, I was... Uh, Thinking about talking about some one of the other ways, uh, modern day prophets in the 1820s mm. in upstate New York. It's yeah. like, dude, <laughs> that is that was so wrong. Yep, um, really, um, just demonic doctrines that sound good, look good, right? You know, people who are part of these kinds of things usually they're living by works so they they have to look good right you know and you'll find that that's the case all those other ways yeah are all based in works yeah and the bible is very clear yeah there is no salvation by works yeah it's by faith alone in christ alone right we do trust in christ's works yes his works because his works are perfect because even our best works are Stained with sin, right? I, I read was reading that yesterday. Mm. And it's like, oh, really? It's like, yeah, all my righteousness is like a filthy rag. Yeah, you know, it's like, oh man, yeah. Kinda, that that narrow gate sort of gives that picture. Like we, we're trying to bring all of our stuff into the yeah. into the gate. I got my backpack and all this. Look gear. at all my good deeds. Look what I did here. Yeah, and, yeah. and Jesus, you got to you got to yeah. take all that off. Drop it. It mm-hmm. won't get you through the gate. In fact, it'll keep you from the gate. Right. Yeah, and so yeah, so it is hard. Um, but what a blessing when you find a lot of people might be saying, "Yeah, that narrow way is oh, it's just so it feels re- so restricted, right?" But then there's this you pointed out in this sermon that it's like a funnel. So right. the the narrow way is narrow at the beginning, but it it gets you know the freedom wider that we wider. have. Yeah, the freedom we have in Christ is really a full freedom. Yeah. Free from sin. You know, think about if sin is bondage, you know, the Bible says anyone who sins is a slave to sin. Mm -hmm. We're slaves to righteousness, which leads to freedom, not to bondage. Yep. You know, so... Right. That's the... uh, Just made me think of the radio show, uh, Unshackled. Yes. You know? Oh, I used to listen to that all the time. Yeah, Unshackled. The Pacific Uh, Garden Radio Ministry or something in Chicago, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tons of powerful stories about people who were... Unshackled that they of what their sin. I can hear the organ in the background. Yeah, doodly doodly do. Yes, and uh, those were some powerful. I mean, everybody's story. Of, what did they find once those shackles of sin came off? Yeah, that funnel, that freedom in Christ, just boom. You know, right? Yeah, and it's only through Jesus. Yeah, only Jesus the only can way. give. Right? Is yeah. So and yeah. when you enter it mm-hmm. without any of that stuff, yeah, it it is that um, you know. The restrictive part is that it's the only way. Well, yeah. that's, you know, that for us who like lots of options, you know, yeah. 100 flavors of ice cream down at the ice cream shop. Yes. <laughs> I don't want just vanilla. Um, yeah. No, no. You, you've got to see, you know, there is only one way. Yeah. But again, that funnel, which uh, I think it was Jay Vernon McGee's where mm-hmm. it, he was the one talking about <clears throat> this, viewing this as a funnel. Yeah. Um, the wide way and the narrow way. Yeah. It, it's It's... Which way are you viewing this? You got to flip that funnel around yeah. as you kind of consider Christ. Yeah, you know what are you going to do with Jesus? Well, he says there's one way. That's the, but the the broadness it keep it, and it just imagine an eternally getting greater yeah. in scope of yeah, it's just so much freedom. Yeah, so much good when you start at that narrow way, but not very many people will find it. Right. So the the challenge then is to share the gospel. Help people to see their need of Christ yep. through their and and that's hard. I mean, I was talking to one of our missionaries over at the uh, in our uh, Christmas in July thing, celebration that we had, mm. and um, the Thai people T H A I mm-hmm. from Thailand, they're really good people, right? And they and uh, our missionary said one of the hardest things to do is convince a Thai person that he's a he or she is a sinner uh. because they're so. They're kind. They defer to other people. They just, you know, they're the pleasant. Yeah. You know, moral. So, right. Very moral people, mm-hmm. but no Jesus. Yep. So you can't, morality without Jesus is 
uh, works. Yep. It's a human effort kind of deal. So, Fate, you know, uh, the, the works, uh, it makes nothing in the end without faith. Right. Yep. Yeah, it's really yeah, it's really really important to make sure that we keep on the narrow way. We find the narrow way, which is in Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Um, we and then staying on the way. It's like I still hear myself asking the question. Well, yeah, but the narrow way. How is this going to be good for me? In the <laughs> long, <laughs> it's like I keep on reverting back to the me. Mm-hmm. You know, the narrow way isn't about you. Right. It's about walking with Jesus, and so, oh man, this self-focus deal is really a hard. Yeah, it's a hard uh, battle to keep on fighting because I just my default is whoosh, yeah. right, right back here. You know, I think a lot of it too is this thing that Jesus already talked about in the Sermon on the Mount. You know, uh, of knocking on the door. Yeah, you know, there's the the gate is there, it's, and it's a, a solid door, and he's waiting on the other side yeah. for you to. Put your full faith and trust uh, that faith, but that's what it requires is is full faith and trust. Not I bring something else in. Yeah, Jesus plus something else. Right. It it doesn't work that way. Or or something else plus Jesus. Right. right? So the other thing is the focus and Jesus. We want is, it to yeah. work that way. Yeah. And I think a lot of the reason is because I can see me. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, all I see is me <laughs> a lot of times. Right. Mm-hmm. That's um, that's bad. But. but the God who is unseen waits for us on the other side of the door, and when the door opens and we see Him, you'll you'll. That's why this. You see so many new Christians just like jumping out of yeah. their skin, so excited about this new life in Christ because the door has opened and they've seen yeah through the end of the funnel into what yes. Yeah. Christ is and, yeah. and the whole the fullness of God. Whoa. Yeah. I was sh- talking with one of our folks at the um, picnic, yeah. and he was able to share with me that he and his wife have been praying for these people for quite a while, been talking with them, and uh, a couple came to faith in Jesus Christ. Mm. <clears throat> and they weren't embarrassed. Uh, they took a photo of it and shared the photo of them. They actually got baptized in Lake Michigan. Nice. And so, I mean, cool. there was they believed, and they were like, "Man, we need to be baptized now." Yeah. You know, so they went to the lake. It took photos of the whole event, and then you know, the couple from our church just shared the photos with them because they didn't want to, you know, broadcast it. Yep. But the couple that got saved broadcast it. Yeah. They said, man, we just... Blah, blah, blah. We're excited. So yeah. here we have, we got to light the candle this coming Sunday. Yeah. Because, Woo-hoo. yeah, because someone entered the narrow way. Yep. And they're finding incredible joy. And and when you've gone through that narrow way, yeah. this is where it, it really interacts with the golden rule, right? Is yeah. entering the narrow way is realizing what Christ has done for you, that you could do nothing at all. Yeah. And so then when you enter in through that narrow gate and experience all the blessing of Christ, yeah. you, this is an overflow of your heart transformation, yeah. why you would then live for God and others, that you would go pursue in a loving way to, to love on others. Right. Right? Yeah. And getting saved from your sins isn't just a fire insurance policy. Right. So... It's then, a whole new way. Right. So it's not just a sheet of paper that you stick in your safe to prove that you're not going to burn. Yeah. And then you go on and live your merry old selfish life. Yeah. I mean, that's the way I was living myself when I was a teenager up until my 20s. And I was not happy living mm-hmm. that way. I, there was no, you know, it was a selfish life is not a happy life. Yeah. Oh, a selfish life is a miserable life. Right. Not only for you, but for anyone who bumps into you. Yeah. I know this because I do this to people that are close to me. It's like, oh man, when I'm when you're living selfish, it's rough. Yeah. But uh, yeah. And uh, not to jump ahead to the sermon that follows, but it kind of again, these this is one sermon yes, for Christ. One big long sermon. So when you've entered through the gate, <clears throat> sometimes you get that <laughs> uh, I'm trying to back out of the gate a yeah, little bit, yeah, sort of thing towards that old life, yeah. Um, and then, then you're starting to feel that narrow, restricted end of the funnel, yeah. maybe a little bit. Yeah, and it's it's uncomfortable when you're trying to not live the right way. Yeah, um, and Christ is showing you right. It's right in front of you. This is the life that I'm calling you to. Yeah, right. Live this way. Go this way. 
Do you know how many sermons I heard about being backslidden in my life? <laughs> what is what is backslidden? Yeah. Well, you're sliding back. Back. You're yeah. going, it's like, hey, Jesus is, whoa, asking, you know, pick up my cross and follow him. Yeah. Man, I'm not sure I want to pick up the cross. Right. It's like sliding back and it's like, Arr! then you get that pinch thing. And we start. Yeah. I think even in that, start, uh, like, the focus starts to turn towards, I'm uncomfortable. I don't like this. I'm struggling. Yeah. And uh, the the picking up of the cross, well, it hurts. It's pokey. Yeah. You know, it hurts me, that kind of thing. Yeah. And Jesus is still saying, yeah, but this narrow way that leads to life eternal yeah. is a, the abundant life. Yeah. Like it's right there. Keep your eyes up here. Yeah. Eyes up. Like yeah. Stop looking I, yeah. at, at your splinters. Yeah. <laughs> I got a magazine in the mail from uh, Voice of the Martyrs this past week. Mm-hmm. Me too. Oh, my word. The the cover, I just get, s- there's a word out now, slay, right? So if you're slayed, it's like, oh, I'm just, you know, I'm killing it. Mm-hmm. But it's, this is more like, I'm dead. I'm just, the, because the, the title, and I shared it with one of my kids yesterday, and she said, wow, that title of this magazine, the, the article is just, oh, wow. It's called The Privilege of Persecution. Mm. Nice little alliteration there for all the preachers in the crowd. Right. Sounds like Bonhoeffer's The Cost uh, of Discipleship. Uh, yeah, it's really... it's, But it's the privilege of persecution. And there's a mom and a son uh, being hu- hug, a mom hugging a son. I couldn't tell if the kid was crying or what, but it's there's a communist flag in the background. Mm. And it's like, okay, The Privilege of Persecution. Mm. And I was like, wow, that kind of, that relates to the Beatitudes. Yep. Blessed are you who are persecuted because of righteousness, for yours is the kingdom of heaven. Right. So there is a real blessing in this narrow way, yep. even when it's hard. Yeah. Or maybe because of the hardness, it's blessed. I don't know how to, you that, know, think that's, through that. It's so true. I think the end of it, anyway, would be like what Paul talks about a lot of times that... Um, that there's no fear for death. Yeah. Because death is victory, death is gain. Right. For like, me to live as Christ. What can you do to harm me? Nothing. Right. Because if I'm done with this life, even if somebody takes my life, yeah. Um, which is was taken. <laughs> yes. Uh, right. In a mm-hmm. violent way, he, he moves on into eternity with Christ, the open end of the funnel. Yeah. Right. And so, yes, there's going to be what the Bible actually promises. There will be yeah. persecution if right. you claim my name. Right. E- expect <clears throat> it. Right. Right. But with the hope of eternity set before us, who who can come against us? Right. If we're on the narrow way, in that narrow way, we don't go out looking for persecution, hopefully. Right. That's kind of, that's different. Yeah, that's um, different. I wouldn't want to be, it's like, yeah, bring it on. It's like, uh, no, please don't bring it on. Right. But if it is brought, yep. then we're, we know that God has allowed it. Yeah. God can use it. Um, you know, if you're discouraged with life where it is right now, you know, read uh, Persecuted for Christ by mm-hmm. Richard Wormbrand. Yeah. Anything Voice of the Martyrs is going to be uh, really good. We're, gonna, we're going to a conference this coming uh, Sunday. Yeah. And uh, I, th- I can't remember. His, he's a Czech guy, uh, can't, but he was uh, in a Sudanese prison for, I think, over a year. Mm. Peter was his name. And so... Uh, Yellick, I think, or something mm. like that. And so he's going to share right. the blessing of being in an ISIS cell, in a cell with some ISIS prisoners in Sudan. Yeah. And he, he shared the gospel with those guys. He, he mm. was, I mean, it, 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 there was fearful, you know. Yeah. And yeah, the, the narrow way is not even described in these verses as the easy way. No. The easy way is the wide way. Yeah. Right, but... We the, like that easy button. Right. Oh, man. Oh, the easy, Where's the easy... I mean, Paul, button. perfect example, right in the book of Philippians. Yeah. He's writing the book of joy, but it's not coming from the easy place. No. He's writing that from a prison. Yeah, he's not in his lazy boy recliner. No. And, uh, but notice the tone of that book. Yeah. It's joyful. <laughs> yeah. It's hopeful. Yeah. It's it's face focused in the right direction. Yeah. And uh, and yet, 
facing very difficult things. Right. Yeah. And so that narrow, yeah. So the, yeah, yeah it's, I think Philippians 1, 20 and 21 is for me to live as Christ and to die as gain. Right. So yep. is living that, is Christ. Yes. It doesn't mean living is not easy. Right. Living is not about me. Well, think about how Christ lived. Right. If that's what we're living Christ, right. Christ gave us the example of that. Right. Okay, I, I live humbly and poor in spirit and merciful and all all those things. Yeah. Jesus also gave his life up. He was greatly persecuted and Yeah. Um, yeah, and it was if for the for the joy set before him he endured the cross. Right. So there's joy. Yes. And I think we need to refocus on, so if we're in the middle of a hard time, that's one of the questions. How can we be encouraged when we find the road hard or long as we follow Jesus? And so we have to realize, we have to find joy, not in circumstances, right? joy in Christ. That's what the people that you were serving in Mexico had discovered. Yes. People for sure. Uh, in Honduras, when we have visited them, go down to serve with uh, El Ayudante. Yep. There's a lot and of, yeah. What I think you asked the question, it just kind of was coming to my mind as you were yeah. saying that. Well, what are the practical ways that that, that happens? Yeah. To me, one of the forefront things is worship. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. What, did, what did Paul do with Silas when he was in jail? Yeah, they, they were. They, they sang. They sang a hymn. They sang the doors right off. <laughs> uh, well, God did that. But yeah. they were in worship, right? Yes. Their, their way that Jesus was their life, their yeah. focus, their center, even in yeah. the midst of whatever circumstance, praise. They're, yeah. They're worshiping. Jo- Job in the Old Testament gives us the same picture. Right. David, the musician. He didn't just face easy things. Right. Um, so get your worship on and and you're going to be yeah. focusing on, on the person of Jesus. And you can worship in lots of ways. Mm-hmm. Song, yeah. which is awesome. Yeah. So turn up that praise music. Yes. Um, turn up your prayer life. Yes. Because then that focuses on Jesus. Right. You know, I mean, this, we keep pounding these three nails. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's They're good nails to pound. But it, it pray, praying and preaching the word, yes. getting the word, mm-hmm. and do it with somebody, people. Yeah. Boom. Talk about it. It's like, man, I'm really going through a hard time. Would you pray for me right now? Yeah. It's like, okay, now we're getting somewhere. Mm-hmm. And now um, maybe if I can praise God in the middle of this storm, yep. that's a praise song. And uh, Or he gives and he takes away. Yeah. That's another praise song. Because I think the danger, what we often fall into is we end up focusing on the problem, right? Not the yep. praise. Right. If we just only, oh, I got all these problems. And right. It's so hard. And, right. Uh, not that it's not hard and not that no, there's not problems. No, it's not ignoring it. So when we turn no. on our praise, we're not saying, oh, everything is great. No. We're, we're saying, saying this he hurts. Is great. Yes, he, yes, this hurts. God is great. Um, that's Psalm 42 and 43. Yeah. Why so downcast, O my soul, put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. Yeah. So you've got to talk to yourself. If you're in the middle of discouragement, which... Hey, it can happen mm-hmm. to everybody, anytime, anywhere. Yep. You just you got to talk to yourself. It's like, why am I? Why am I so discouraged? Right. If it, yeah, down, uh, fearful. Yeah. Right. Is it about Anxious. me? Yeah. So sometimes I'm discouraged or frustrated. It's like, why aren't people treating me better? Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, oh, right. Uh, I turn to myself. No, right. I'm not going to be. Golden rule is not about you. Yeah. Right. <laughs> oh, it rhymes. Yeah. Uh, golden rule is not about Yule. Yule. Uh, Yul Brenner, uh, you as a person, right? So we need to keep ourselves focusing on on Jesus. Um, yeah, and it's not. I had a friend of mine uh, send me a text yesterday, and she was studying theology and digging into all these kinds of. She's studying the Holy Spirit. She's studying mm-hmm. the Trinity. She's really growing in her faith. She wants to study some deep theological stuff. And uh, but then she said, "But I I don't want to dive in so deep. You know, I just want to focus on the basics." Yeah. It's like, oh, focusing on the basics. Mm-hmm. The basics will carry you a long way down the road. Right. My son used to do, uh, oh, what was it? Shorin Ru? Um, karate. Oh. It was Okinawan. Okay. And so they, every class, they do 10 basics. Okay. Yeah. So they start out the class with 10. So you do Ichi, Ni. So, so I, 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 part- I yeah you you got the you got the Japanese well, I know the numbers. Down. yes that's good for you that's uh but the moves 
and and they do the same moves every time. The you know right. answer the phone, you know the <laughs> block, and then they do all the and then they do a block down here. Anyway, um, and and the the power is in the twist, uh -huh. in the twist of the hips. And uh, Mike O'Grady, that was the dude that taught my son uh, Shorin Ru uh, karate. I asked him, when do you get really good? When do you get really good at doing these basics? Mm -hmm. Because they're basic. Yeah. You can you can do them on the first time you're there. Yep. But it's like, when do you get really good? He said, oh, I think if you start in your 20s, you would probably be decent by about your 50s. <laughs> I was like, what? Yeah. 30 years of basics? And he was like, "You, the longer you do them, the better you get. Right. The more strength of your core and the, oh. the muscle memory that you've built. And you're, it's a, he said, it's a, he said, I do the, I do my basics so much better now. Mm. There's more power in his punch. Yep. After 10,000 punches, after yep. 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 twists, right. you're going to, you know that the the power is in the, you know it's it's not a it's not a big you know it's not like a brawl right it's like a controlled it was really powerful so yeah you the, throw too many just big haymakers you're gonna wear yourself right out <laughs> get back to the basics throw the haymaker and then get punched by a dude right. who has that Bruce Lee power you know right. twelve million volts in his fist so it's like oh. <laughs> So bring that back into our world of faith and the Christian life. Yes, and apply the basics. The, the basics of so what of are that the what are our life. basics? What are our basics? We got we got prayer. Right. Again, it's our it's our vision statement for 2022. Yeah. We have prayer. The basics of prayer. Ah, uh, but it doesn't seem you know I just pray. It doesn't seem like all that much. Whoa, whoa, that punch right there of prayer. Yeah. Whoa. Right. Prayer and scripture says it's powerful and effective. Yes. And you do not have because you do not ask yep. from God. So get to prayer. We need to be humbly, again, not about pride. Yep. Hey man, I'm praying a lot. Uh oh. You yeah. know, so, don't don't say that. Don't do that. Just do it. Yep. Just do it. Read the word of God. Yep. Find a, a good translation. Read a little bit every day. Here's a challenge for you. Start reading Ecclesiastes. Oh, Whoa. oh we're doing that. Yeah. It, because that's our next sermon series yeah. coming up. I started to, so it's like... So you're getting a jump start. Yeah. And you've probably already been smacked in the face by Ecclesiastes a little bit. Yeah, I, a lot. <laughs> uh -oh. the, the preacher. Is, <laughs> yes, the, the, the name of the, the dude is the preacher, right? right the preacher... Uh, is, is the preaching. He's yeah. doing the preaching at people. It's good. It's really, really good. So start e reading Ecclesiastes. And if you found it confusing, I this... We're going to go through it together this whole, this fall. And we're going to discuss it and work through it and preach it and... And apply it. And apply it, yes, and pray it. Yeah, so that'll be really good. So prayer, preaching, relationships with other people. Maybe mm -hmm. you're discouraged and you don't... Um, it's hard to find your people. Yeah, I think it's it's e so easy to be lonely today. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's so easy to be, uh, you know, just on your own or on your phone. Right. Oops, I just said it. You know, so and the the first two we mentioned are so much better. Praying and and the preaching, the word part. If you're doing it with people, pray with somebody. Yeah, study the Bible with somebody. Yeah, all of a sudden there's more. Right. So that's where that people part applies. It's not just. Go and hang out with somebody. You know, right. the world's doing that. Right. But do it with intention. With the Bible in the middle. Yep. So that's a great plug for a life group right there. So Boom. so life Boom. group is <laughs> we're just booming all over the place. Yeah. I, I think you mentioned before the start of the podcast, one of your children, if they he makes a good point. Yeah, Hudson likes to Booms, you know, he he doesn't call it mic drop. He just calls it's, it boom. boom, boom, boom. Yeah, drop. Yeah, make the boom, big, <laughs> big boom. Yeah. So this is we, and you get better at the basics the more you do them. Yep. Don't think it's like well, reading the Bible and prayer and spend time with people with studying the Bible. That's kind of easy. It's like okay, but it, it it it's not. It doesn't sound difficult, but it is spiritual warfare, and mm -hmm. we need to keep at it. It's not, you know. Well, I've done 10 Bible studies. I think I'm pretty much done. Uh, no. Right. Let's do 20,000 Bible studies and maybe we'll be, you know, getting that 
power punch by right. about that time. We're you know we're going through Matthew five through seven. Yeah, three chapters. Right. Um, Sermon on the Mount. Many of you may have gone through this before. Yeah. And hopefully you've already discovered so much more. I have. Right. Right. And and I know if I did it again. Yeah. Just keep multiplying that. Yeah. It keeps there's feeding. Always, yeah. God's word is living and active. So yep. there's always something new for you in the scriptures. Yep. Always something new for us. Let's talk about us, not just about me right. in the scriptures. So we want to thank you so much for being a part of uh, the On Our Way Home podcast, either watching or listening today. Uh, again, keep tracking with Jesus, a good local church, and a few close friends. Um, that's where life is found. So thanks so much for listening today and watching, and we will catch you next time. Mm-hmm.